my role has been to work with companies that have an idea and f- help them find a way to bring it to market without spending a fortune. Yeah. You know, what, what, what's the best way? And so I, I bet you everybody in the chat room, everybody watching this show right now, has an idea. We they all have, have ideas, yeah. right? <laughs> something that would change That's the right. world. That's right. And, and the, the hard part is just figuring out how to do it. Well, and I think there are people that are going to take advantage of you, too. What do you think? I see the ads all the time. You know, George Foreman. You got an idea? I can help you get it patented. I can help you get it. You know, most of those are fraudulent. I mean, most of those, they want your money. They'll give you some kind of a booklet they put together, but they don't deliver the product to the market. It's hard work, and you can't can't do it for thousands Subcontract of people. It to somebody yeah. else. Yeah. You have to do it yourself, and yeah. you have to do it with a few smart people. Dick D. Bartolo talks about this all the time. Of course, you know, sure. you know Dick. And uh, he and I both kind of hate to do this, but we are often the bearer of bad tidings. People will say, I got a great idea. And Dick will say, you know how much it's going to cost you to make a prototype, to get it to market, before you'll even know if it's a good idea? Exactly right. It's a, it's a lot of money. And one thing, you know, I've had a lot of inventors come to me and say, I had this great idea and I took all my savings and I patented it. I applied for a patent. Right. And I'll tell them sometimes a patent doesn't mean anything because these days patents take years to come right. to get. And as a result, you may get a patent, but it, all that is is a license to sue. And it doesn't stop anybody from it copying people your idea. patent trolls is what it does. Exactly. Because they end up never making a product. And you never make a Do you product. remember the first product you brought to market? I worked for Polaroid. And uh, my first product was this plastic camera, color pack camera that actually... Yeah, I remember that. Remember the peel apart film? Yeah. And, yeah, so I worked for you Polaroid. Looks out of like you got a Polaroid uh, with you. Where'd you put that? You, I, had, you have an SX-70. I thought it was, is it? I do. This is one of the Holy, original... Here. You got a camera right there if you want to show it or I can show it too. See where that camera is? It's on your knee. <laughs> this is this isn't real TV. Here, give it to me because I'll have to show it. This isn't real TV. This is this is uh, we have we we don't have camera operators. We have them suspended from the oh, ceiling. So you just have to put it where the camera is. Nobody, yeah. nobody can aim it. Look at that. First of all, uh, I w- I, you unfold it. How do I fold it back? Just push the little arm on the on the other side. On the other side here. Push that because it's back. very um, compact. You know, these were really expensive. Cause, and I remember my dad bought one. Yeah. Is this real leather or simulated? It's real leather made by a company called Buxton. Buxton, remember I remember that. I had a Buxton wallet, wallet. Company yeah. in uh, Rhode Island. Yeah, I was in Providence right. with Buxton, yeah. Exactly. So you wouldn't know, this is a camera. And then I open it like, how do I open it? Is there Just a button? Just pull the back of the top. The back of the top. Yeah, right, is right here? pull that up, yep. I don't want to break it, because this is, how old is this? You know, that um, is Look at that. 45, 50 years. It's actually a beautiful thing, isn't it? It really is. It's a work of art. It was an incredible design at the time. And, the, and the, this was their best camera, right? This was their best camera. Yeah. Yeah. And the technology is really impressive. It has so many new things in there, you know, the, the rubber bellows on the side, the seven or eight lenses inside to let you look through the lens. It's quite amazing. Oh, this is an SLR. Yes. So you can actually see through right. the lens. And then what are these dials here? So one is for focusing and one is for uh, exposure oh, yeah, you adjusting. You see the lens move, can't you? Right. Wow. And then this is brightness. Exactly. Oh, amazing. And did it have la- it had some sort of interesting focusing mechanism? Was it a laser? What was it? It was no, a beam. They, well, on this Ultrasonic. one... Ultrasonic? Eventually, they came out with another model that was ultrasonic. Ultrasonic. And this one has a split image rangefinder, which is what, well, I, what, I, what I developed for That's how Leica for works. I mean, they still, you buy a Leica manual camera, you'll that's still a get range it. Finder. A right. split image range. Is it, how does that work? It's a prism, and you're trying to get the, the halves exactly. to line up. And it's about four times more accurate than just looking at a diffuse screen. That's why Leica does it, right? Right, exactly. It's very accurate. So it's actually, there's a Fresnel lens mirror inside, and it's basically uh, you line up a vertical. Oh, yeah. And just turn the wheel in the front. I think Dad had the ultrasonic. Yeah, and that came next. Yeah. 